the best tournament for Cinderella runs, the oldest ongoing national soccer tournament in the United States and a place to showcase this sport across the country. We're talking about the US Open Cup, baby. We're getting down to the business end of this tournament from starting off with 103 clubs entering this competition, stretching all the way from amateur level clubs through to the NPSL, USL2, USL1, and the USL Championship, as well as MLS Next Pro and NISA, all the way to the top flight of MLS. We finally arrived at the point of the round of 16. Out of these remaining teams, we have three lower division clubs left and 13 MLS teams. It's the big dogs against the little guys, but do I see any of them making it into the quarterfinals? That's what we're gonna look at today as I preview how I think the rest of this tournament is gonna shake up. Before we jump into the matchups though, I wanna quickly mention what it takes to be successful in this competition. First off, like every game and tournament, you need to have a little bit of luck. Especially with no VAR in the Open Cup, not every referee decision may be right, and not every call will be made. So yeah, that's something you can't really control. But something you can, and the biggest key to success in this tournament, is just actually taking it seriously. For some reason, the Open Cup is seen as a very small tournament, and even though it is the easiest way to qualify for the CONCACAF Champions League, many teams couldn't care less about it. For the lower division teams, I mean, this isn't really a problem, because they live for these games against MLS clubs. This is their World Cup. But for those MLS clubs, a lot of them, they play a reserve side, or maybe they don't really prioritize this cup. So to be successful in the US Open Cup, you need to be lucky and you need to be serious. Now let's get into the breakdown. The first matchup I'll cover is Sacramento Republic at home against the San Jose Earthquakes. Sacramento is a club and a fan base that has yearned for MLS. They were granted an expansion spot in 2018 and set to begin a few years later, but after their lead investor backed out, their spot looks like it's gonna be given away to Las Vegas. So I think winning against an MLS side is a huge motivating factor in the revenge story for this club. To get to this point, Sacramento has not had any challenges above their pay grade. Taking out Central Valley Fuego of USL1 and the more difficult but manageable task of beating Phoenix Rising. On the other end, this is a San Jose squad that has not undergone the best start in MLS. After losing their head coach a few weeks ago and still struggling domestically, this team probably sees this competition as a way to bring back some good vibes to the locker room. In previous rounds, the Earthquakes have stopped Nisa Sai Bay City's FC and just took out the Seattle Sounders in penalties. Like with all of these interleague matchups, I'm always rooting for the lower division club. And honestly, even though with San Jose's goal scoring tally looking very scary in the past few weeks, I'm changing this last minute to say that I think Sacramento Republic will beat the Earthquakes. Next up is one of the most tantalizing MLS matchups we see in this round, and it's El Trafico. LAFC traveled to Dignity Health Sports Park to reignite an already fierce rivalry that we've seen once so far this season. In that game in MLS play a few weeks ago, the Galaxy came away with a huge win against the red hot LAFC team and continued their dominance at home against their city foe with seven consecutive games unbeaten. Both of these teams play a mixed starting lineup in the Open Cup, but in my opinion, LAFC does have the better depth Therefore, even a second string lineup can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a lot of teams. But for this one, I have a feeling we will see both clubs roll out a very strong lineup. You can't play too many rotation players when you play your rival. And even though it's the Open Cup, this game means a lot to the fan bases of both of these cities. Currently, LAFC are on top of MLS, and the Galaxy have started to stunt their form a little bit with losses to Real Salt Lake and FC Dallas in the span of three games. I think this is gonna be one of the tightest matchups we see in this round of play, and I'm gonna take LAFC to break their away curse against the Galaxy and pull through in extra time. Another MLS matchup comes into play in our next game, where two sides that have been struggling will get a chance to gain a little bit of momentum. SKC are off to one of the poorest starts 
they have ever experienced in their history. With a few key playmakers missing, including the likes of DP Alan Polito and number 10 Gotti Kinda, this SKC team is sitting second to the bottom in the West with two wins, seven losses, and three draws. Although this team has really struggled to score in MLS play, they've done pretty well in their only cup game so far, netting four goals in an extra time victory over FC Dallas. Similar to San Jose, I think this team is gonna wanna buy into this competition because winning a trophy this season will do a lot for a team that is currently heading towards missing the playoffs. For Houston, they're kind of floating around mid-table in the MLS. After a respectable start, Houston's only picked up four points from a possible 15 in their last five games. So far in the Open Cup, they've come up against two USL Championship sides in Rio Grande Valley and San Antonio, squeezing by both with a goal in the final 10 minutes. I think Houston still has a lot to play for in their MLS push, and I'm predicting SKC to really go out in this Open Cup, which is why I'm gonna back SKC in this one. The final matchup on the western side of the bracket is an MLS vs USL League 1 game between Minnesota United and Union Omaha. For Minnesota United, they're coming off a drawn out game against the Colorado Rapids in the Open Cup after their field literally became a lake. In that match, we saw a very strong lineup featuring an attacking trio of Adrian Uno and Franco Fregapane, and off the bench star playmaker Emmanuel Reynoso. In this match, Reynoso ended up picking up the winner, which is telling of how Minnesota's season is going. Without Reynoso in the lineup and in form, this Minnesota team really struggles in chance creation. I am a bit worried for this game though because of the fact that it's against a significantly lower level of opponent and maybe head coach Adrian Heath will let his guard down and not really play at full strength. But I mean, can I blame him? Union Omaha are the lowest level of competition still in this tournament currently playing in the third tier of American soccer. Omaha's journey in the Open Cup began all the way back in April, where they knocked out Des Moines Menace, the Chicago Fire on Penalties, and the Northern Colorado Hailstorm. What a name. Union Omaha have already picked up $25,000 for being the last team left in their division, but it's hard to pick them to win again here. I'm sorry to be this guy, but I'm taking Minnesota. On to the Eastern side, we're starting with the New York Red Bulls against expansion side Charlotte FC. My initial assessment of New York in this competition is that they care a lot. In their first matchup against USL Championship side Hartford Athletic, they basically put out the strongest 11 they had, which included the likes of Patrick Lamala, Lewis Morgan, and Aaron Long along with, I mean, all of their other big players. We saw the same type of energy in their last cup game in a 3-0 win over DC United. From a side that also has been one of the most competitive in MLS play this season, I think the Red Bulls have a very good shot at making a deep run here. For Charlotte, they also just came off a big win, this one against the Richmond Kickers. They're similar to the Red Bulls in the fact that they really want to go far in this tournament. A trophy in year one would be a huge accomplishment, but I see the Red Bulls coming away with this one. Next up is another all MLS matchup and a rematch of the 2021 MLS Cup Playoff Conference semifinal. NYCFC at home against the New England Revolution. Both of these teams have had a slower start to their MLS season and a big reason for that is because both of these teams were competing in the CCL at the beginning of the year. For NYCFC, they seem to bounce back pretty well after being knocked out in the CCL, and in their last six games, New York has scored a whopping 19 goals. With so many attacking options with the likes of Tati Castellanos, Diago Andrade, and Maxi Morales, it's clear to see why too. In their one US Open Cup match this year, they faced Rochester, New York FC, and fielded a lineup with a mix of their top guys and some younger products. It's hard to pinpoint how much this team is gonna push for this trophy as they're still trying to climb that MLS table, but they are another team that I can see going the distance. For the Revolution, they're finding their form again, but I still think they're feeling the pains of their five game losing streak across all competitions earlier this season. In their first Open Cup game the other week, the Revs beat an informed Cincinnati team five to one. I think the product is there for the Revs to really push in this competition, 
but they're still in 11th place in the East currently, so I'm not sure if this tournament is a high priority, especially with Bruce Arena in charge. I'm taking NYCFC at home. The final all MLS matchup we'll cover here is the Florida rivalry between Orlando City and Inter Miami. Orlando is coming off a big win over the Philadelphia Union in their previous Open Cup game. This is another team who really puts an emphasis on their strong team selection in the Open Cup. Over the past few seasons, on paper, Orlando has been the more competitive team out of these two clubs. But the head-to-head -head numbers don't really follow that assumption. Orlando and Miami have encountered each other on seven occasions, with it being split down the middle with two draws, three wins for Orlando, and two for Miami. For me, I think that Miami fits into that category of teams who can benefit a lot from an open cup run. Although they're kind of coming off a good run of form, this Miami side has struggled significantly in their three years playing in MLS. There's a big power dynamic going on with Higuain and the rest of the team, and I'm not too sure they're gonna be able to pull it out when this Orlando team is hunting for blood. Also, keep in mind, this is a rivalry, a young one, but bragging rights in Florida are up for grabs. Especially with this match being played at Exploria Stadium, I think Orlando is going to come through in this one. And finally, the last round of 16 game, and maybe the one I'm most excited for. It's Nashville SC against Louisville City of the USL Championship. For Nashville, I put them in as one of my favorites to get to the final here. This team is really dangerous when they're on their game, and after a massive comeback win in Atlanta in their last Open Cup game, I think that winning spirit will stay with this team. Along with that, they just opened up Geodis Park, and even though they are playing in this stadium for this game, a trophy in the first year of that stadium being around would be an amazing feat for this club. The issue is, I don't think they got the easiest matchup here. Louisville City is one of the more respected clubs coming from the USL. They've got a great fan base, an in-touch front office, and an impressive stadium for a lower division team. Then you add in the Kentucky-Tennessee rivalry, I think this is gonna be a big one. To get to this point, Louisville City had to battle. A tough game against the Chattanooga Red Wolves, then St. Louis two, and a big one, a penalty shootout win over Detroit City in Detroit. If any lower division team has a chance to go far in this competition, my money's on Louisville. But the issue is I have Nashville coming through in this game. I want Louisville to pull it off, but I'm just not bold enough to say it. After looking at my round of 16 predictions, we end up with Sacramento versus LAFC, SKC versus Minnesota United, the Red Bulls versus NYCFC, and Orlando City versus Nashville. I'm taking LAFC against Sacramento Republic, Minnesota over SKC, the Red Bulls over NYCFC in the Hudson River Derby, and Nashville over Orlando. In the semifinal matchups, I see LAFC making it to the final on one side and Nashville SC on the other. And that's where I'll leave it for now. I hope you can find the joy in the US Open Cup over the next few days. I hope you enjoy all of the games and thanks for watching.